Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is Thursday. It is May. What is it today? May the 26th. All day. Today is May the 26th, 2022. It's another Technical Alpha podcast. Got a great show lined up for you today. I got to. Uh, no, I'm going to leave that door open. It's getting warm in here. Which I, I, I mean, I'm happy about because it means outside is warm. But now I'm sad because I'm inside and I'm just sweaty with none of the outdoor benefits. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Once again, thank you for, uh, for stopping by. If it's your first time talking about video games, movies, television, and everything in between, whatever tickles our fancy at this point in time because we're old men and we yell at clouds. Some people find it entertaining and hopefully you do too. Before we get started though, I got a very important question, the most important question of the week. Mr. Black, how was your week? Um... It was just another week this week. I've been uh been chilling, been vibing. Uh see you've been enjoying your back deck a little bit more in the last uh, uh bro, last I'm, few days. Uh, bro, I'm out there all the time. Probably going to go out there right after this. Has it has it uh has it made you any uh any more inclined to uh to bite the bullet and pay somebody to stain the deck? No. No. <laughs> no. That ain't happening this year. I'm right right now we're in the uh Right now, our driveway's getting paved, so... Um, oh, that's finally happening. Our, oh, good. Yeah, oh, all good. of our cars are parked on the road, and they're, uh, they've been working on that since yesterday, so I think it's going to be done tomorrow, as long as the weather holds out. Uh, okay. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much... That's been pretty much it. I'm going, flying out to... Um, flying out to Spain in... Uh, what, next week? Next Friday? Yes. So, yeah, just been prepping for that been uh been chilling watching watching some movies watching some tv just uh vegging man vegging and and uh, i'll be grinding pretty hard with the streaming stuff over the next next week but uh then i'll have 10 days of chilling in barcelona sounds terrible truly yeah. it's awful well, my beach. week, my, my, my week wasn't yeah. anything uh special either i don't have a driveway to pave uh at least not yet uh, but, uh, yeah, just continue to work at the house. We've got, uh, home despot fucking up a delivery twice. And so, uh, we've been delayed, uh, a couple of days thanks to that. Uh, we also ran into, uh, a minor snag, uh, outside of that delivery, which was, we went to put in the, you know, over the range combo microwave and vent hood, uh, to vent the, you know, whenever they're cooking in the kitchen. Because the closest HVAC exhaust is is far enough away that we wanted to have something there for them. So, uh, yeah, we went to uh, to do that, and uh, I bought the microwave and and everything, and we we had the instructions out. We were getting ready to go, but just before we were going to get started, uh, we were just sussing out where we were going to run our uh, or how we were going to run our power. And in the process of that, of course, we had to turn stuff off of the breaker. And in, in that process, we, uh, dad discovered, wait a minute, what the fuck is, what circuit is this bitch on? Like the existing vent hood that's there. It's like, what, none of this makes sense. What circuit is this on? So, uh, he walked around with the radio. We didn't have a light, so we plugged in the radio over and over again in all these sockets. And whoever did the electrical in that space was fucking bath salted out of their godforsaken fucking mind. They have... Every single plug in the living room, every light in the hallway, every light in the kitchen, and the vent hood are all on one singular, uh, one circuit. So if you plug in a TV or a computer or anything like that, any kind of entertainment center or anything that draws any amount of wattage at all, and you were to put a microwave on that same circuit, you're fucked. You're going to basically... The, uh, what's the panel? Like, what's the... Uh... The, um, it's just standard 15 amp. Oh, okay. So the 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 microwave's thousand watts. Yeah. And um, uh, most, uh, if you have a, 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 a setup for now, back when they did it, granted, in fairness to them, the electronics that would have been plugged in there were unlikely to draw enough with a microwave to also do you know, to trip the breaker. Uh, but yeah, Brian, uh, you know, brought Brian over, who's, you know, our, our electrician. And he, he said, oh, no fucking way. I said, great. Awesome. Amazing. So they also have a plug that was for a table light. 
in the kitchen, single plug, has its own circuit. 15 amp to one table plug. Not not a, not a plug on the countertop space where you know you'd be plugging a blender or like a fucking you know uh, uh, another mi like a microwave or some of the shit like that. A table lamp plug in the side of the wall in the kitchen has its own fucking circuit. It's called table. We looked on the panel. It's just called table. Nice. Uh, and so yeah. Anyway, the, our options were essentially tear half the wall out, which is an exterior wall, in order to reroute that table plug. To the cabinet where we would be putting the uh, the the microwave, uh, because the panel's full, like the mini panels there, that we have no space to add another run, even if we wanted to do that, which would also require poking a thousand holes in the fucking ceiling to snake cable across the entire apartment. Uh, so there was there was no easy option that didn't involve tearing a wall apart. So I said, "Fuck it, we're doing it live." So I went back. I took the fucking microwave back to home desk, bought bought a vent hood. We're just putting a regular ass fucking vent hood. Uh, in there, and then we'll get a countertop microwave instead. I was trying to avoid that because there's not that much countertop space, so yeah. I was I was trying to save whatever minimal countertop space was there by not having to 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 go that route. But we didn't have a choice. It was either that or tear half the apartment apart and ask me if I was going to fucking do that shit uh, at this uh, stage. So so you can't have a range hood. That's what you're saying. No, I can have a range hood, just not one that has a microwave attached to it. Oh, so the, attached to it. Yeah, it's it's a mi oh, you know because okay. there's those microwave yeah. range hood combos, which is what yeah, we were trying to put in. Yeah. And then there's just flat out range hood, which is just a vent, and just a vent draws like almost zero power, but a yeah. microwave thousand eleven hundred watts is gonna fuck the circuit up if you have other shit running on it at the same time. So, uh, so yeah, yeah that's, that's why. Yeah, so yeah, we we, you know, we, yeah. we got there. It was just a, it was it was it was you know when gas costs four hundred dollars a liter, the last thing you want to do is keep driving back and forth to Home Depot four times in one afternoon. It's just yeah, not really yeah. not really a good time. So anyway, like aside from that, everything else is going smoothly. The uh, the bathroom floor and, and stuff is in. Uh, we got to plumb up the uh, the vanity and whatnot, but otherwise that's all done. Brian uh, put in the the new little heater in there. Um. They've got they've got these fancy new heaters now, uh, baseboard heaters now. Not the not the I mean they still make the ones that are in the houses that we grew up in, but they also have like these new duplex heaters that uh they they're super efficient and they have to be they have to be separated from the wall like by five eighths of an inch because they're so they run so fucking hot and they shoot the the hot air directly up. There's this little it's it's like this fucking big, well not that small. It's like this big. And it's five hundred watts. And this big. And if you get a regular baseboard heater that's 500 watts, it's like fucking four times the size of that. And so we got this little tiny one for his bathroom because it allows us to open the door and whatnot, but that's all in. And otherwise, we're just uh, waiting for Home Depot to get their shit together long enough to uh, send the, the shipment for the rest of the stuff that we need for the apartment. And then we'll be putting in the drop ceiling and all that other nonsense and, and, uh, and looking to hopefully in the next week or two finish the apartment uh have it painted and and hopefully be done by uh you know the next couple weeks and then after that if brian wanted to he could move in uh and that would be done and we'll dad and i will move upstairs to complete work in the upstairs of the house so we're getting there it's happening not quickly but it's happening now it's time to talk about some video game news mr black shall we yep not to be left out, because everyone's been selling themselves like a cheap hooker these days. EA was looking for somebody to buy them. Please, somebody save us from the fact that we had to change the name of our soccer game from FIFA to something else entirely, because it ain't going to sell nearly as much now. Please, God. Holy shit. And that was their game. That was their pitch, really. They went around everyone. That was basically what they told everyone was just, please save us. Um, and uh, nobody has. Uh, they went to Apple. Uh, they've gone to Disney, they've gone to, I believe they even went to uh, Amazon, the usual suspects, the people with lots of money. And they said, hey people, lots of money, please buy us, and everyone said, how about no? Because they probably looked at EA, and remember that stat line of like, 70 or 80% of EA's entire revenue is based on selling FIFA Ultimate cards within FIFA, uh, the FIFA series, and said, wow, that's not an entire mansion built on a fucking toothpick? Nope! Not happening. Not at the valuation that they are clearly trying to get. So no luck for EA thus far, unfortunately, but they're going to continue to try. Bless them. 
Uh, ex Hearthstone dad Ben Brode and the rest of the uh, second dinner crew, which is a development team that he left Blizzard and Hearthstone to go and uh, and create and join or join. I can't remember if he was a co-creator or not, but he's you know lead one of the lead bro bros over there. Put out a trailer showing off some of their upcoming Marvel card battler called Marvel Snap, <laughs> which if I had to take a guess. And if it isn't, I'll be disappointed. Is a reference to the one true god, Iron Man, uh, getting the snap on. Or the Thanos snap, whichever one you want to go with. But either way, uh, you might imagine, given it's a bunch of people that left the Hearthstone team to go and make a game, it's, uh, it's a card battler that's an awful lot like Hearthstone. Except they looked at it and said, what can we do to make Hearthstone even better? And the answer to that was strip out as much shit that doesn't need to be there as possible and uh, make it fast and punchy for all the, the youths uh, to feel like they, you know, they're going quick and everything's flashy and amazing. And so that's what they did. And you put out a trailer or two for it, you can check it out if you want. Once again, it's called Marvel Snap. Uh, it looks pretty good. Again, not surprising. It's a bunch of ex-Blizzard guys and gals making a card game, which they, they came from the team that revolutionized the entire fucking card market with Hearthstone. So can they do it again? Well, I mean, they managed to convince somebody at Marvel to give them the license, so if they do, I have a sneaking suspicion it might make a few dollars. Shot in the dark on that one. Of course, it's starting on mobile, uh, but they do plan on releasing it to PC, because PC is, is a big market for these, uh, these electronic uh, collectible card game category. Uh, and uh, if, when, you know, if and when more stuff comes out, you know, we'll keep tabs on it, because... I still think there's lots of room for uh, for this market to grow. It's just everyone's been chasing down Hearthstone for so fucking long uh, and treading water, and that 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 market came and went. So maybe this is the new hotness. Uh, we'll maybe. wait and uh, and uh, and see. I, I just I just remembered, and for two reasons here. One, I just it, I I think you I think you even responded to the tweet uh, here a few days ago where I was like, hey, remember when Valve released Artifact? Yes, that happened. And then it yeah. died. Very Im quickly. Immediately. Yes. Faster than almost any game I've ever seen die. Yes. Uh, and, and it got sent to the Shadow Realm. Uh, and now I'm thinking, I'm like, hopefully this does not happen again. I don't think it will with these guys. But the other thing is about Artifact is a sidebar that I didn't even uh, write in here. I don't know if you heard about this, but some, some, ultimate, some ultimate Giga Chad was streaming Morbius on Twitch under the Artifact... Uh, title on on which for 12 straight hours repeat morbius on repeat 12 straight fucking hours before it finally got caught and probably only got caught because it hit social media and everyone was like holy shit some fucking uh you know giga chaz is streaming this shit but uh yeah there you go the ultimate way of enjoying morbius truly is to watch it with twitch chat popping off on the side, which was pretty funny. There's record, of course, of Twitch chat uh, memeing the entire <clears throat> time the Morbius is playing. And that might actually be the only way that it's entertaining. So, you know, maybe it was a, a net positive for Morbius. I don't I don't know. Maybe they garnered some fans based on Twitch memes. But uh, regardless, there you go. And uh, all the best to all the people that uh, unfortunately wasted buckets of time on Artifact. Rip. In a massive W for the gaming industry, however, Mr. Black. The testers at Activision Blizzard-owned Raven Software, so that's one of the Call of Duty teams, uh, have successfully voted to form the first major union in the video game industry with a vote of 19 to 3. Now, that's a small number, but you don't, you don't necessarily need a bajillion people. You just need a few to start it. Uh, and I think it also speaks volumes that this is the largest and, and basically only video game union thus far <laughs> is this is this group that successfully managed to make it happen. So 19 to 3. Uh, management, uh, prior to this vote, they were preemptively sending out emails, of course, warning how long it can take for a union to negotiate its first contract and to not vote in favor of the union. Which, again, unsurprising. This is indeed what will happen next, of course, if you don't know how all this works, is that they will enter a negotiation phase uh, with Activision Blizzard to negotiate the union's first contract for those it represents. Uh, but this is a huge first step. A big, you know, is the first one. Usually it takes at least the first domino. And then after that, we're, we're likely going to see more and more uh, unionization uh, across the industry, which, much like it happened, I'm sure, to revolutionize how uh, film and TV 
uh, uh, work in terms of compensation for actors and actresses and writers and anything else is the, the Screen Actors Guild, right? They, they determine base compensation rates and all that kind of shit for actors and actresses, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I'm crazy. Am I, am I speaking crazy? Do you know that it's the Screen Actors Guild? I'm pretty sure it is. SAGs? Uh, I think yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the, that they determine it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... It's, the, uh, it's called, um... No, I, the SAG... That, no, that's a different... That's a different... Because it's a SAG award, but I thought it was yeah, a Screen yeah, Actors no, Guild no, that it's, also it's, dictated the... No, it's called, um... It's like a generic-ass name. Um... Uh, uh, it's like oh, a big ass oh yeah, because it applies. It even applies to like voice I think it's actors and stuff. Or I Etsy or I I something. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's called I Etsy, the Motion Picture Studios, uh, Motion Picture Technicians, Motion Picture Studio Production Technicians Union. Something Incredible. Like I I don't know. I I it's called I Etsy. Yahtzee. Yahtzee. <laughs> yeah. Great. Anyway. Either way, the idea being is that as I'm sure that has uh, that has dramatically increased the the pay across the board for most uh, people in the industry, and and I'm sure for the video game industry, having some unionization will likely help there uh, as well. Much to the chagrin of many of the CEOs for these publishers that have been basically just milking the everlasting fuck out of many lower level roles like the QA testers, for example, that are more or less just a flagging pole for people like the CEO of CD Projekt Red to throw them under the bus after releasing something like Cyberpunk 2077 and being like, yeah, but you know what though? What about the QA testers? They fuck- they fucked us. It's all on the QAs. Uh, in related Activision Blizzard news, employees of the company have formed an anti-discrimination committee and sent a list of demands to Bobby Kotick, stating that the company simply hasn't improved enough while uh, citing lactation rooms uh, not being private and breast milk uh, having been stolen. Uh, so this is after the eight, I think it was $18 million settlement that Activision Blizzard had in, in relation to some of this. Uh, but the stipulation was that there was supposed to be movement within the company to start correcting many of these things, and that hasn't been happening, and so they formed this committee to work alongside with the court-appointed representative that is supposed to oversee this, and all they're asking is that they are part of the process with this, this court-appointed person to help navigate uh, the situation. I don't know what kind of freaky fuck is in there stealing breast milk, but y'all need Jesus. Uh, maybe don't... <laughs> Maybe don't do that shit. <laughs> Can you imagine being at work and like you go you go into the fucking room like this like the one room like where the women are supposed to go to have babies to like you know do their thing and they leave and they yeah, have why why is there women with babies at work anyway? Uh, that is a question for the North American working condition, Mister Black, and that's one that you can think on philosophically while I, while I reenact this scene. And here comes spy for spy. Oh shit! Some titty juice. I don't know. I, I don't think people were stealing breast milk. It might just be getting <laughs> might be just be getting thrown out or some shit. I don't know. It seems a little. That's Bro, the there are people are fucking. We dude, they had a Bill Cosby room where they were talking about crazy shit. I'm not gonna throw. I'm not gonna throw. Some dude was taking titty milk out of fridge into the too crazy to believe category. That that seems like it is entirely the wrong possibility. Either way, yeah. the focus is more or less so that they can work with this court appointed person. Uh, and it's just fucking. It's one of the weirdest things I've ever heard. <laughs> First thing that's weird is why is there women at at the at work. Breastfeeding, uh, or because they don't milk. have any time off with their, their kids. They have bring, like it's bring your infant to work day. <laughs> they don't have. They can't afford. Day, it's like they can't afford daycare. They only are given like a limited amount of time of, of like maternity leave. Paternity leave only exists for like uh, a small section of the populace. So you can't go from like maternity leave and then flip it to paternity leave to have you know, with the kid during that time. And so the solution is companies. You know, it, it partially answers your question that they have a lactation room, which is specifically for pregnant women that are at work or women that have babies that are breastfeeding that have to have the baby at work for this purpose, or, or, or a lactation room to just have 
the, you know, to do their thing and store it and then take it home with them. Yeah, that things of sense. that nature. Yeah, that that makes sense. I don't. I don't I'm think sure it's a multi-purpose. I don't think situation. the babies are going there, but yeah, I mean, I can see them pumping milk so that when they go home, that they have, they can take it with you them. You know, stuff ready to go. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking. It's a meme. Either way, or, you know, one way or the other. Just thinking of some like middle-aged, you know, programmer. Fucking, so fucking bizarre, bro. Lactation <laughs> rooms. Fucking just come in and stealing some titty milk. I'm gonna get me some titty milk instead of this just Chappelle's purple stuff. So I'm gonna yeah. give me some of that that titty milk. Uh, I was unaware that this was happening, and I'm not talking about the titty milk scandal, but, uh, I was unaware it was happening until now, but apparently the Red, Cro uh, the Red Cross has been actively moving to remove the Red Cross symbol from games for a number of years, uh, and though that apparently is not so much the case for movies and television. Uh, most recent, the most recent examples... Excuse me, I had an enormous amount of pad tie before this podcast. Uh, the most recent examples uh, shown have been Skullgirls, which is a, a, a popular fighting game, and Prison Architect, which is also an enormously popular game on Steam. Uh, both have had to remove the symbol from their games. Uh, Arch Prison Architect probably, uh, if it's, given the situation, is probably just removing it from buildings or wherever they were using the decal, and then for... Uh, for, uh, Skullgirls, more specifically, there was Miss Valentine, which is a character in the fighting game that is a nurse, and she had the Red Cross symbol somewhere on her, her person. And so Red Cross came to them and said, GET THAT SHIT THE FUCK OUT OF THERE! And they said, okay, well, we can't afford litigation, so fine, we'll do it. It's just a very interesting thing that they've decided to start doing this in the last, uh, the last while, and not earlier, and then on top of that, they're not really doing it for movies and TV, they're just going after games specifically. It seems like a enormous amount of time and energy and money to be spending to accomplish this thing, but apparently they feel like maybe the symbol is being misrepresented or misused in video games in some way, shape, or form. So, uh, I guess all the power to them, but just a strange little factoid that, uh, came into, uh, the podcast topics this week. October of this year just cleared its schedule, Mr. Black. Entirely. The month itself. Cleared its schedule. Yeah. Took time off work. Said no Halloween this year. You know why? Because Modern Warfare 2 was announced to be released on the 28th of October 2022. Any video game that was, that was slated, basically, to arrive in October is probably no longer going to arrive in October. That shit is going to magically come up and be like, Hey guys, we need just... A couple more months to spit shine our experience to make it that much better. And we'll see you in March of 2023 or some fucking other nonsense. Because nobody is going to want to go up against Modern Fucking Warfare 2 uh, in October of this year. I don't think Warzone 2 is slated to come this year as well. But if it does, even more reason to avoid that fucking window. Uh, all the same. What do you think? Uh, if they're going back, dipping back into Modern Warfare, they're bringing back a lot of the characters that uh, that made Call of Duty popular, you know, Soap and, the, and Gang. Uh, are, are you interested in dipping your toes back in the water to rejoin no. the, the crew, or are you leaving that in your, in your youth? Bruh. Ain't nobody got time for COD, man. It's not, my, <laughs> it's not my jam, bro. It's not my jam. That bus has come and gone? That bus has been gone. Mm. Been. <laughs> I mean, if it's free to play, I might like jump into a battle royale just to check it out. But outside of that, nah. Mm. nah. Getting it, getting it in, October twenty eighth. Yeah, I don't know if I'm playing no fucking campaign or shit, but uh, you know, I'm more interested in Warzone two personally because from a, a shooter perspective, I haven't seen very many campaigns in a first person shooter grab my attention in. Well, it's been long enough that I don't remember. It's been a hot minute. I'll say that. It might, it might very well have been the era of Modern Warfare 2, for fuck's sakes, for all I know. Could have been the, uh, the, the mid to late uh, 2000s, honestly. Mm. Uh, Sony has announced that by 2025, half of all first-party games will be on mobile and PC as well. This comes after it was discovered that it, it looks like Returnal is going to be coming to Steam. Sony also is likely moving in this direction, direction given uh, a quarter of its revenue recently has been from in-game purchases, up from less than, I think it was less than 10% anyway, only a handful of years ago. So in-app purchases, in-app purchases from games in general, 
uh, has dramatically increased uh, for them in terms of a percentage share of their total revenue. And if you're wondering, so then why are they moving towards talking about doing so many live service games? There's your answer. Uh, the dollar signs go burr, and Sony says more of that. And so that's what you're going to get. Uh, much to the chagrin of many of the kind of uh, mentally ill console war fanboys on Twitter uh, that every time Sony releases a game on PC, they have an absolute fucking mental breakdown uh, because it's, it's no longer only on the PlayStation, the thing that they bought. Uh, and so by the time that comes out, they're going to have to an adjustment period because if 50% of this shit's popping off, they're going to be having a fucking aneurysm every second Tuesday uh, when, this, uh, when this stuff pops up. Uh, for those with $10,000 computers, Mr. Black, which these days, honestly, is most computers because everything's so fucking expensive. If you can even afford to build one, $10,000 seems like the fucking floor, uh, at this point. But for those of us with $10,000 computers from before inflation, and for those who have $100,000 for after inflation, uh, Asus has released... <laughs> Asus has released news of a 500 hertz panel. Not 120, not 144, not 165, not 240, not even 300. 500 hertz for those who are playing Solitaire, Commander Keen, Chips Challenge, Mavis Beacon, Learn to Type and any other myriad of incredible AAA titles in 500 plus frames per second, you too can experience it in glorious 1080p because nobody can push it in a higher resolution. Uh, this is essentially for people with incredibly expensive, like 30, 90 powered fucking Fortnite machines. Uh, you're, you're, I think the most potent computer available right now can can average just above 200 frames per second in warzone so it ain't going to be a warzone monitor that's for sure uh valorant clearly would be one counter-strike would clearly be uh an example for this but i mean you're you're this is a very hyper specific market for 500 fucking hertz I guess if it if it means anything to you, it's also G-Sync. So if you don't, if you can't crank out 500 hertz, which I'm gonna tell you right now, your computer probably cannot. At least it's G-Sync, so it won't it won't stutter or or tear uh, like it would otherwise. Uh, but there you go. I have no idea on pricing yet. I'm going to ex uh, to assume expensive 99 uh, on that one. Um, and uh, and 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 I don't know when it's coming out either. It's coming out, I think maybe later this year. Uh, but uh, all the same. There's probably going to be about five manufactured at a time. It's going to be hard to find. Every sweaty streamer is going to be fucking buying the shit. <laughs> it's going to be all over the place. You're like, oh my god, I can see the difference. I was once playing at 240 frames, but now I'm playing at 500 and it's just blowing my mind. Bro, not even Shroud. I remember when, Li I think it was Linus that did a our comparison. Uh, like, uh, when they brought Shroud on and they did blind tests to see who could tell from like 60 frames, one, I think 60, 120, 240. I think that was the three. And between like 120 and 240, like when you get past that, it's just like, uh, you, you literally have to be Jesus with foresight to be able to tell what the fuck happens north of 100 and, and, and like even 60, let alone 240. So 500, if somebody goes, comes on and says, hey guys, I can see the difference. Know that they are either on shrooms, acid, or they're lying, or all three. Uh, the power of memes, Mr. Black, believe it or not, uh, not the ones that I've been spitting here for the last th three minutes on a monitor. The power of memes are real. Despite being a decade old and having nothing, uh, no other buzzword, uh, no other buzz around it, uh, or, or anything really after the franchise of late, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, do you remember that one? That was the one where it was like a very action-oriented one, uh, where I think that was the one where you were like literally able to like slice Sword. dudes up and shit. Yeah. Uh, if I'm like not Devil mistaken. Devil May Cry meets Metal Gear? More or less, yeah. So, uh, that game came out a hot minute ago, uh, and out of nowhere, it's managed to have its player count go up by a hot, uh, by not a hundred, a thousand percent, and a peak in achievement activity shown across all platforms. Uh, a study group went in and, uh, checked this out, uh, and that's the, uh, per play, tra this is per play tracker, is the group that did that. 
Uh, meme templates featuring the characters from this game went viral just around the time that all this shit started happening. Uh, and so apparently the power of memes has brought a number of people to the fran- uh, not to the franchise specifically, but to this game, uh, to get in and see where all these incredible memes came from. And so, uh, for, you know, take note, everyone. Memes. Use them to your advantage. You can do great things. Probably great harm, but also, you can resurrect a decade-old Metal Gear game and make people give a fuck about it again. Uh, No Man's Sky! Mr. Black is at it again. Sean Murray, you've done it again, you son of a bitch! It's only May, and this motherfucking team has put out like 710 fucking updates uh, for this game. Uh, this one is called Leviathan, and it brings space whales. Very important. Space I whales. Use the bathroom real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they bring back. space whales, as well as adding new expeditions, new narrative lines, a roguelike mechanic. I have, I have, I haven't looked into the roguelike mechanic. I need to actually see what the fuck the roguelike mechanic is supposed to be, and if it's a permanent thing or like a temporary mechanic that they're uh, that they're putting in. But let's be honest. I'm sure some of us could probably think of several ways in which No Man's Sky plus a roguelike uh, flavoring, a spritzing, would probably be pretty dope. Uh, and more, of course. Sean also took to Twitter this week to say that they've been seeing, or he's been seeing, a lot of people in the community, on social media and otherwise, talking about the fact that, that they are uh, running out of things that they would personally want to see in No Man's Sky. And this surprised Sean. And Sean said, well, too bad. Because we've got a shitload of stuff that we still want to put into this game that we haven't put into the game yet. So buckle up more uh, is on the way. Uh, and I look forward to it. I mean, May, and I think, they, I think he listed how many updates they've done this year. I think there's been like four or five. It's almost like one a month at this point, which is quite impressive. And I think somebody, if anyone out there, if anyone out there needed to take a note out of the fact that No Man's Sky has cranked out five major content updates in five months uh, with a team far smaller and with less money. Uh, 343 Industries, if you're listening right now, which I know you're not, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> no Man's Sky is making you look bad. All right, they're out here cranking this shit out like it's hot cakes. We can't even get more than two maps, one game mode, and a partridge in a fucking pear tree for Halo Infinite. Uh, and so, take some notes. Make it happen. I believe. I have the tiger and all that. Also, uh, Star Citizen. I mean, we all know. Nothing more needs to be said. Star Citizen. Mr. Black. Yeah. That's all we got for video game news, which means it's time to sell out. Give us the best! Patreon.com slash lag TV. Head on over there. Throw some money at the screen. Do your thing. Um, also... We've got NordVPN. If you guys don't already have a VPN service, type in, if you're in the chat, actually, I don't think we have that here on this stream, but you can scroll underneath, maybe click on a banner. Oh, no, it's right there. No, there we got it, it. We got it. We have a night bot. Out. Yep. There it is. Uh, if you're listening to this on YouTube or on streaming services, wherever, you can click on the link in the description on YouTube, or if you're just listening to the audio, you can go to www nordvpn.com slash ott use the promo code ott get a massive discount plus a bonus month when you get a two-year subscription you support the stream the podcast you support yourself because you can stay safe and anonymous while you're on the internet so whether you're in that the dark web and you want nobody to know you're in the dark web on. buying and selling titty milk that you stole from the office yes <laughs> They'll never know. Your ISP provider will never know where you're going <laughs> in that dark, dark corner of the web. Or you just want to stay safe. You don't want people to get your IP address, steal your information. Whether you're in public, at your home, you can hook it directly up to your router, your smartphone, your smart TV, your laptop, your desktop, your Mac. I mean, they got an app for everything. So make sure you guys go check them out. It's super easy to use, guys. When I say it's literally one click, it's one click. There's no programming numbers unless you want to get really intricate and stuff. Like, yeah, you can do some pretty crazy stuff, but for just like the basic user, you can just click once, US, Australia, UK, wherever, 
and then pick your city if you want. If you want to get closer, whatever, you can figure it out. It's super easy to use, and for less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks a month, it's a no-brainer. Can no -brainer, we still say guys. that? Yeah. As coffee, dog, as coffee, dog, I mean, inflation's getting crazy now. I'm just wondering if like a, a cup of coffee at Starbucks is now like forty eight dollars and seventeen cents. Oh, it probably is. That's why I'm saying it's less than a cup of coffee. <laughs> oh, that's I true. Mean, oh no, that's okay. No, sorry, it's, I was reversing okay. it. No, let we're okay. Me, let me, okay, it's even it's better less, deal now. It's less than two cups of coffee <laughs> at Starbucks. Okay? Well, it's definitely, it's definitely less than two cups of coffee. Yeah, it's pushed right. Okay. It's okay. less than it really anything at Starbucks. It's you less than one quarter. Water. It's it's less than opening the door to walk into the Starbucks. There right you now. go. It's a, it's a steal of a deal, guys. So head on over there. Support them. They support us. Um, yeah. I mean, you can. You, they even got threat protection now. So if you have a desktop and you're using the desktop app, you don't actually have to be hooked up to a server. You can just click on the threat protection and that'll just passively run in the background so that, you know, websites can't track your cookies and things that you're doing so you can get information and gather info on your searching habits, all that stuff. Um, all that stuff, it really, truly works. I use NordVPN all the time. The only time I really don't use it is when I'm streaming. Um, although you can use you it could. to stream. Yep, absolutely. I've done it in the past. Um, you can use it to game, stream. If you want to play different regions of video games, and you just can't connect to that, you can use your VPN. Um, you can do it to download movies, shows, anything you want. Watch different regions of Netflix and other streaming services, a click of a button. Go check them out. They're a big supporter here. Go support them. And when you use the promo code OTT, you get like 73% off, something crazy. So head on over there and do it. And that's it. Speaking of Starbucks, Mr. Black, before I say that, though, that means it's time for... Movies and TV. Before we get into that, I had I just talking about Starbucks. I, I just remembered. So so M was out for a a, a rare little uh, get together with one of her uh, one of her close friends, and they stopped in on the way home uh, to to do the drive through Starbucks experience because she hasn't had a Starbucks in a hot minute. Because we really don't have one that close. You got to go out of your way to get to a Starbucks uh, from where we are. And so she, you know, they stopped in and they all got like their their little. Uh, uh, cold drinks and had like the whip topping and the whole fucking nine yards. It was what, 710,000 calories in a fucking glass kind of deal. She brought that home and she got like halfway through it and she was like, here, you know, you can finish this. And I was like, I'll put it in the fridge. I'll have it later. I forgot about it for a week. I went in, mm. I opened the fridge here this morning to, to retrieve some food for lunch. Uh, and it's still there. Hasn't moved. And I'm fucking shit you not. If I had taken a picture of it a week ago and a picture of it today, it's the same fucking thing. There hasn't been a single... That whipped cream hasn't fallen. The stabilizers are too strong. So if you want to live for eternity, mm. go to Starbucks and ask for some whipped cream. And I'm pretty sure if you just rub it on your face, you will be youthful for the rest of your life. You will never change. That shit has some weird fucking anti-aging properties that no scientists has discovered yet. Go and do it now. I don't suggest ingesting very much of it. But, you know, just... Like a like a Mrs. Doubtfire situation. Just put some in a in a pie plate and just wham and mm. uh, come up. And if you want to say the hello part every time it ha go for it. And now it's time for some movies and TV. Daredevil series, Mister Black. Has Daredevil ever been good? Yeah, I mean the the movies not so much, but the apparently the TV show is good. I've only watched I think the first two episodes um of like the original stuff but yeah i'm hearing that they're co it's coming back uh relatively soon yeah i don't have a date i just know that daredevil uh, daredevil as a series is under work at disney plus and yes yeah. unfortunately who was Daredevil? was it ben affleck was daredevil in the movie yeah. in the movie yeah. yeah in the movie and then the yeah. tv show i think the tv show did like relatively well i can't remember yeah, what channel did. had it originally uh, uh but it was on um well i know it was on netflix for a while they had they had all those those shows on Netflix. I don't know yeah. where it originally aired, but this was before yeah. Disney Plus. So. Yeah, it was before it was before that stuff. Uh Chris Hemsworth, Mr. Black. Chris Hemsworth's Thor is benefiting greatly from Chris Hemsworth prepping to be Hulk Hogan uh in the latest Love and Thunder trailer, which still unsurprisingly looks pretty good. Chris Hemsworth is the largest he's ever been in his life. Uh and in this trailer he's got like the one scene where it's the you know the the he did a thousand push-ups before the camera turned on. This dude is juiced out of his fucking mind. He is oh, for sure. 
way bigger than he has ever been for Thor. It, enough that everyone on like Twitter was like, it, why is he so fucking huge? What the fuck did Chris have? And then people were like, oh, wait a minute. He's roiding out of his mind to try and get to the same size as Hulk Hogan, who is significantly larger than Chris <laughs> Chris Hemsworth. But he's looking was good. also roided out of his mind. So. Well, that's it. That's it. I mean, he has to be, because if yeah. you're trying to be... Uh, well, even even Hogan off the roids is a significantly larger man than Chris, than Chris Hemsworth is, like, naturally. Because before he was even wrestling, before he even touched it, he was just some shitty bass player in Florida. That motherfucker was six foot, like, seven or whatever, 300 pounds, and he's just huge. So, uh, very difficult. And all the, all the fucking props to Chris Hemsworth for even with steroids, 99.9% .9 of all humans would never look even remotely close to what he looks like right now uh, with all the work that he's put in. So, uh, so yeah, I don't know how many tires he's flipped, but they're big tires and there's many of them. Uh, what do you think of the trailers we've seen? Have you seen the latest one? Uh, what are you thinking I, about this? I did. I, I enjoyed the newest trailer a lot. Um, I think Gore looks awesome, uh, played by Christian Bale. And this was more of the vibe that I was looking for for a Thor movie. I, I I did enjoy the first trailer, but it was like more of a teaser. There wasn't a whole lot going on. The best part was like the whole. Yeah, yeah. When he's moving to the side there. Yeah, um, that was funny. But I, I really enjoyed this trailer. I thought it, I thought it was good. I think this is probably going to be one of the better uh, MCU movies. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a good time. Yeah, I still think Ragnarok is one of the best. MCU yeah. movies, so oh, it's not, awesome. so it yeah. wouldn't be surprising if this turned out to also be a pretty damn good movie. Uh, and uh, uh, what else was I thinking? Uh, I mean, yeah, and I agree. Christian Bale, we saw in this one, we see we see his character in this uh, looks pretty good. Christian Bale being uh, entering is this Christian Bale's first entry point into Marvel? Yes, he's in DC, obviously. He's but, in DC, obviously, yeah, but not Marvel. Yeah. Yeah, and good for them for picking him up. Christian Bale is a, as a bad guy. That's a good pick. It's a spicy pick. Uh, I can't stop. This is the indigestion for you. You know what? It's worth it, though. Pad Thai, fuck me. I don't have it very often. It's like a donator. Yet once in a while, you throw some Pad Thai in your life, and it's a life-changing mm. experience. But the indigestion is also life-changing. Uh, the Gray Man, uh, which is a spy thriller from the Russo brothers, starring Ryan Gosling and uh, a mustached Chris Evans. Got its trailer this week, Mr. Black. Uh, and looked pretty good. I like the trailer. Did you see the trailer for that, uh, that one? Yeah, what are you, what are you thinking? I mean, it doesn't look... It looks generic-y, but at least it looks good generic-y as the best description I can, I can provide. Yeah, I, no, it looks, it looks good. I mean, it's coming on Netflix. Um, it's the Russo brothers. They make awesome shit. Ryan uh, Gosling hasn't had a shit movie in a hot minute. Yeah, Chris Evans is awesome. Uh, yep. I think it. I think it looks great. I mean, Netflix got this new thing now where um, I do believe starting with um, Knives Out, uh, Knives Out, they're going to start releasing Netflix exclusive movies or some of them in theaters first. Uh, I think forty five day window, and then move it to Netflix. I think they probably should have done that with this movie because mm. I think it. You know, I think I this think it would have done pretty model. well in theater. Yeah, I think I think this is a great model for Netflix. Like, listen, if you're going to go and spend hundreds of millions of dollars for like Knives Out, and it already does well in the box office, why just release it on Netflix? You know, put it in theaters for the new small theatrical window that they have now since COVID, forty five days, because before it was like ninety, um, and uh, yeah, let it run there. Make you know, make a hundred million, two, three hundred million if you got a hit on your hands. Uh, or more, uh, and then release it exclusively on Netflix. And I also think that with, you know, Netflix is hurting right now. Like their stock is down a billion dollars. There's a lot of shit it's, going on in Netflix. It's not looking it's hot a, there. <laughs> it's a hot mess. Yeah. But I think that this is a good route for them to start making some money. And I'm surprised that they haven't done this in the past because now they'll be able to pay, to continue to keep paying for these films and these actors. Not only that, I find when a movie hits theater first and then goes to Netflix or any other streaming service, there's a lot more buzz around it because it's known as a theatrical movie. When a movie goes right to Netflix, it's looked at more of straight, DVD, to, DVD. straight to DVD. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. like it's not theatrically good. It's like, you know, if it was such a great movie, why wouldn't they put it in theaters? 
Um, and so this this is a good model. I think that this movie should have been the first one that they did it with, but yeah, maybe uh, they had some weird contractual thing for this one specifically that they didn't possibly. want it. They couldn't have moved it. But I agree. I think this would have been. Uh, I mean, it's an action. It's an action spy thriller thing. I mean, uh, and it's got Gosling and 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 Evans. And, and I, mean, Evans. I mean, fuck, that's like the that's an incredible combo to be putting on, in on a on a big screen. So, uh, yeah, I agree. But uh, neither you know, either way, I should say, I think it's probably going to be pretty good. I look forward to watching it. I like both yeah. of those gentlemen. Uh, and like I said, Russo brothers. It just seems like. It seems like if it's bad, the floor for it being bad is high enough that it's not going to be a bad watch. Like, you're going to enjoy <laughs> enjoy it one way or the other. Uh, the first batch of reviews for Top Gun has started coming through, uh, to my knowledge, Mr. Black, and it seems to be doing uh, very well thus far. What's the, what, what are we currently sitting at? Uh, I have no idea what's on Rotten Tomatoes, but... Um... I thought last time I checked, was in fairness, which was a couple days ago, was like high 90s. Probably still is. Uh, Top Gun 2, Rotten Tomatoes, yeah, 97 critic review, 99 audience score, and 97 is 233 reviews. Holy shit! Uh, bro, bro! So what, I, what, what I've been hearing about this Top Gun is it's the best movie of the year, hands down. Well, clearly, by the and sounds of it. I also heard that it absolutely destroys the first Top Gun, and what they do in this film is absolutely mind, mind-boggling and insane. Um, apparently, the story's better, the acting's better, the stunts are better, the action's better. The Well, I mean, the in every- fairness, it's been, th- what, 35 years? But, I mean, dude. Still. they to, did a, s- to, to do a sequel this long and true. a movie that's so beloved... True. And come that's, out that's, and it's overly positive. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's rare, big. bro. That's yeah. rare. That's true. Um, and you know, Tom Cruise keeps showing us he's one of the last movie stars yeah. of our generation, you know, like old school movie stars. Um, I'm hearing this movie is just absolutely nutty. Like every reviewer I've watched, they're like glowing. They're like, dude. You guys need to see this on the biggest screen possible. It's going to blow your fucking mind. So I'm going to go check it out. I haven't watched the original Top Gun since I was like 13 years old. So I'm going to go and rewatch it. I mm. I forget, like, I know how the story goes. I watched goes. it like last year, I think. I, I, yeah. I watched it again. It's been so long since I've seen it. So I'm going to watch it again before, uh, I think it comes out this, this week. Uh, mm. So... I'll watch it uh, over the next couple of nights, and then I'll sneak out and see it um, in IMAX. But yeah, I'm hearing nothing but amazing things about this. So yeah. I'm excited. There you go. Um, along with uh, oh, along with God of War, Sony has announced that a Horizon TV series, as in Horizon Zero Dawn and Horizon Forbidden West, that that line, uh, is also getting a TV series uh, that's in the works. Uh, and perhaps the most intriguing to me, a Gran Turismo series is in the works. However, that's going to play out. Uh, confirmed TV or film deals, just to go back over these, for PlayStation games so far, uh, then include Uncharted, as we know, The Last of Us, Twisted Metal, Horizon, Ghost of Tsushima, Gran Turismo, and God of War. So they've hit a lot of their, I mean, Twisted Metal is kind of the, the, the awkward standout there in terms of, uh, in terms of, of things that you wouldn't expect to see turn into a show, along with Gran Turismo, I suppose, but in general, these are like their heaviest hitting thing uh, uh properties uncharted the last of us uh horizon ghost of shishima god of war those are basically like their fucking mount rushmore uh over there for them from their first party studios so they're really hitting uh, a lot of stuff here and trying to get more money out of each and every intellectual property that they have and extend it beyond just games and merchandise you know what can we do for tv shows movies and whatnot and most of these should within reason, translate to a TV series or a movie relatively well. I mean, I, I, like, some of these, I mean, most of these, and it's one of the arguments against these as being really, truly incredible games beyond, you know, beyond just an experience of, of, of more or less going through them, is that many of the Sony first-party titles are, for all intents and purposes, just, like, loosely playing out a movie. The gameplay is is usually not insanely complex you're more it's like a very cinematic uh experience as it is so i have to assume that they'd be able to translate that uh relatively well with again the weird standouts being uh twisted metal and gran turismo although i can see twisted metal before gran turismo like twisted metal i can be like okay mad maxi type yeah you we've know kind situation of had, we've kind of already had 
that type of game, uh, those types of movies before. There's been a couple of twisted metal esque mm. movies mm. like before, and they weren't that great. I think Jason Statham might have starred in one of them. I forget. yes, and I can kind of see the the poster for that in my head. Yeah, it was like Death Death Race or Death. That something. sounds I don't, pretty close I don't to reality. Know. Uh, but yeah, it sounds. It also sounds like a Jason Statham special. How the fuck did I remember that? <laughs> yeah. Death Race. Yeah. Yep. Jason Statham. Death Race. Oh, I don't there know. There you how go. I remember that from 2008. Uh, well, obviously, what they need to do is bring back Jason Statham for Twisted Metal. Clearly, that's the you know the circle of life would be complete at that point. Uh, I'd be excited to see a Ghost of Tsushima from uh, if you get it in the hands of somebody who's really good with cinematography. I think that would be kind of a uh, of a of a of a pretty show to look at. Uh, but I'm most intrigued with whatever the fuck they're gonna do with Gran Turismo. I mean that that's a different that's a different animal entirely. I don't even know what the fuck that's gonna be about. Um, and after that, what do we got? Oh right, these two last things snuck in here right before I, I got on the podcast. Mandalorian season three got announced here just before the podcast. Uh, that's landing February 2023, uh, or also possibly depending on how you. Uh, viewed some of the more recent Star Wars shows. This could be Mandalorian Season 4 or 5. Sure. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and lastly, here's Star Wars Skeleton Crew, which is an original series starring Jude Law, uh, is also planned to come to Disney Plus in 2023, but no month or anything that I saw uh, given to that. Um, you can probably find some more information on that, but the name alone seems to indicate... Mostly what you're going to expect from that, from that, uh, that show. And there you go. Jude, Jude Law, you know, Jude Law in Star Wars. Fuck, fuck, yeah, sure, okay. Sure, why not? Jason Statham in Star Wars. Why hasn't that happened yet? Probably because he's, he doesn't want to associate himself with Star Wars. Probably, probably. You know, that's, and that's fair. That's fair. J Jason Statham already, already has a banging career where he just gets paid good money to basically just do action shit. Had to be Jason Statham. <laughs> He's just yeah, he's just Jason Statham. That's that's the that's has, the dream. He has zero range. He's yep. just Jason Statham. And, and you know what? I will watch works. every single yeah. Jason like Statham him. as Jason Statham movie. Yeah. That he puts out. Uh that's all I've got for movies TV, unless you've got uh anything else that's cropped up that you're aware of. Mm, no real movie news. I mean I've I've watched some movies over the last week. I went and watched um what did I start with? Um, Uncharted. I finally watched that. How did you feel about that? Um, it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. It was a mix between... Uh, it was a mix between... National Treasure. National <laughs> Treasure. And um, Mission Impossible. No. <laughs> it didn't have Mission Impossible. Like, maybe a, a bit of Pirates of in, the Caribbean. How, like, how much Indiana Jones made it in here? Okay, I can see a bit of Indiana Jones. I actually think okay. there's an Indiana Jones reference in there More at, than likely. at some point as well. Yeah. It was, um... It was okay. I mean, uh, I like... Um, what's his face? I like Marky Mark, and I like um, Tom Holland. Yep. Um... It was a little weird seeing Mark Wahlberg play Sully. Um, He's supposed to be older. Yeah, it, that deal, was a yeah. bit strange. But I also understand that Tom Holland is young as well. So, like, you know, the main character like from the, the games. It's supposed old. to be prequel-ish, isn't yes. it? Yes. You could see like he's just coming into his own. It's it's like, you know, I wouldn't necessarily it was a bit of an origin story, but like nothing. To, Similar to like the Tomb Raider movie they did recently yeah, here, where they exactly. that's actually that's a Tomb Raider is probably a real it's a Tomb Raider meets um like the Mummy or something like okay. National Treasure or whatever okay um so it had those vibes I would give it like <laughs> six and a half out of ten okay all right you know like okay. maybe a, maybe a seven if like I don't think I can get it to seven but like six and a half. <laughs> Um, that's what I say it. most nights, Jeff. I don't think I can get it to seven. <laughs> nope. Sorry. Nope. Can't do it. Nope. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was, 
It was a mi- it was mid <laughs> uh, mid trash or good. It was it okay. was it was like mid. You know, if you have nothing else to watch and you want a little bit of action, like a couple of the action scenes were really good. Um, really over the top. I mean, the big there's like two big action set pieces, and they're so unbelievable that like it almost felt like a video game. It was like they they were getting into the realm of Fast and the Furious. Unbelievable. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, um, not as like in your face ridiculous, but like not too far away. Um, so you know, it definitely kind of felt video game ish, which maybe that's what they're going for. Uh, but yeah, I didn't hate it. Didn't love it. It was just I. Was, it was okay. It was I. Um, what else did I see? I saw another movie as well. Uh, goes to show like how much I. How much really attention enjoyed. you paid to it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to get a list here because I watched, watched a couple. Uh, the other one that I watched was, uh, Ambulance. I watched Ambulance. I heard, I, well, I'm surprised you didn't remember because I've heard at least relatively good things about Ambulance. I enjoyed Ambulance far more than I enjoyed, uh, Uncharted. Okay. But I would give Ambulance, like, I'd give it like a seven and a half. Okay. So it's got a bump. Between it's got a, bu- seven, a point bump. Yeah, between seven and seven and a half. Okay. Um, it's one of Michael Bay's better movies that I've seen in a long time. Um, you know, the acting was was well done, but you know, it was Michael Bay. So like if you if you like Michael Bay, you're gonna like this movie because I think it's 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 one of Michael Bay's finer workings in the last decade um but what's what's something else michael bay has done here in the last few years um he did that he did that uh uh that movie that went on netflix as well uh, let me see here michael bay and he's also done you know transformers crap well, transformers uh, yeah but I'm, I'm wondering like more recently than that because yeah, transformers he did, been a while can't believe he's actually doing oh he's producer for the raid um yeah six underground he did that one. Remember what Ryan oh. Reynolds? Oh, yeah, that okay, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was good. that was that was no. That wasn't very good at no. all. Um, it should have also did, it should have also been Six Underground, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. He also did Thirteen Hours, uh, which which was with John Krasinski or whatever how you pronounce John his last Krasinski. Name. Yeah, um, and then obviously he done a bunch of Transformers. He did Pain and Gain. Um, this was definitely his better movie that he's done literally in the last ten years. Yeah, and I mean. Is it is it like a home run movie? No. Is it um is, is it a, a home good run time? for a Michael Bay movie? Absolutely it is. <laughs> uh you know, I I saw it. I watched it here at home and uh I I had a good time. It was it's a little long. I think it's like 2 hours and 15 minutes. It could have been could have been like an hour and 50, you know, 2 hours tops. It, it, it quite literally is this, guys. If you don't know the story, all right? Here's the premise. There's uh, two brothers. Um, they, they've got a different dynamic. One's black, one's white. And they have a little bit different, same upbringing, but obviously they're, it's a little different because, you know, they're, they just. Anytime they're Michael just, Bay and race is involved in the same movie, I get a little fucking sketched out after the, yeah. uh, the illiterate Transformers. Oh, yeah, it's not that bad. No, no, no. Okay. They're, it right. does, they don't, they actually, actually, what's quite nice about this is they don't really play on that too much. Um, there, there isn't, you know, they, they, they don't throw that shit in your face and he doesn't, he isn't making He showed some, some weird, restraint. Oh, a lot, a lot. Not when it came to the action, though. So, like, uh, essentially two brothers. One of them, uh, they, their their father is is a is a is like a world famous bank robber, crazy guy. I won't tell you the backstory of him, but that's just the premise. Okay. And one son is doing went one way, and another son went the other way. One of the sons needs some money. Um, I won't tell you why because I want to give too much of the story, but he needs some money. And the other brother, who's a bad or, bad influence, but they're still brothers gets him to come on this bank heist to steal like 30 million bucks or whatever. Um, so they go on this, this bank robbery. It doesn't go as planned. They end up, uh, in an ambulance, which is why it's called ambulance. 
and the madness ensues. So think about, and, and they get into this ambulance about 20 minutes into the movie, right? So 20, maybe 25 minutes tops. So we're looking at 20 minutes of the movie. They're in this ambulance. Very similar to Speed. So if you guys ever saw Speed with Keanu Reeves, where Good him movie. and, yeah, I think it was what, Julia Roberts um, or Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock, yep. Uh, they're, they're on a bus, and they can't stop the bus because it's going to blow up. That's not necessarily the case here, but let's just say they can't really stop the ambulance because they're being chased by cops. Um, so I, when I, sh- I shit you not, when they get in, this is this movie 100% is paying like paying homage to uh speed because they get in this ambulance and it is literally bare minimum an hour and 40 minutes maybe an hour and 50 of non-stop high octane action like there there is one scene in between all of this where there is a slight pause in craziness and when i say slight there's still craziness that is happening during this pause, but and it, it's it's nonstop. Now, the reason why I think the movie could be shorter is because it starts to get a little bit repetitive. There's only so much shit that you can do in an ambulance and driving on highways and through populated places without scenes starting to feel very similar. Same Z. Yeah. So, you know, there's hostage situations. So you're dealing with like cops on phones and tracking things and trying to get away and blah, blah, blah. So overall, I really enjoyed the movie. It was a little bit over the top, but it's Michael Bay. And it, he did everything that I, that I wanted him to do with this movie. And I really had a good time with it. So I would recommend people to go see Ambulance if that's your type of thing. If you're not into like mindless action, this, this ain't going to be for you because literally I just told you the entire premise. It doesn't get any deeper than that. <laughs> that's just, like, that's a, they, when you read the back of the box at the, at the blockbuster, you actually read the whole movie. Yeah. Now you're just going to go watch it play out. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so, you know, and you know, some of it's a little unbelievable. Of course, you know, Michael Bay, he figured out how to hook, uh, like an IMAX camera or whatever he had to a drone. And so he okay. had, he had like, some he had some really unique cool drone shots like that were going like in through like through like cars and underneath and there there was this really co- there's some really cool aerial shots that like okay. almost as if it was a helicopter and then like the you know the this it would go down and be like all one smooth scene and you'd see these really cool things or you know maybe there's some cuts but then he just he just kept doing it and I was like oh you're you know you're you're doing this too much like you, you took a good thing and then you gave us too much of a good thing to the point where it was a little bit, I was like, okay, Michael. It's like, Same. you got your ice cream and then you put a little whipped cream and then the person's like, oh, fuck it. And then puts like another, like a half a can. And then instead of one cherry, they're like, oh, I like cherries. And then they just took the whole fucking mar- like That's cherry it. jar. Just yeah. Yeah. Michael it's Bay. like, it's like, it's like if you said, Hey man, you want a cherry on top? Yeah, man. I love cherries. And they said, okay, just put the whole bucket on there. And it's like, okay, yeah, I like cherries, but like, dude, I, this is just too much cherry. You know, now it's just not, now it's just not tasting as good, but uh, <laughs> now it just tastes like cherry. That's yeah. all I can taste is cherry. That's it. So, uh, yeah, that's my quick rundown awesome. of ambulance. Good they, time. They, they did a bunch of practical effects in that. Didn't they? It was, oh, a it, movie. was uh, it was almost all practical. Yeah. They, there was, they did some CGI obviously, yeah. but, um, yeah, they, you could tell they were destroying lots of cars, blowing up lots of shit. Just Michael Bay. I, so I respect. I respect that. Not a lot of people yeah. going out there doing mostly practical effects anymore for uh, for movies. It's like, can we build you know build a dome and then use Unreal Engine five to basically just generate the entire fucking yeah. movie? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we watched. Em and I checked out um, uh, Fantastic Beasts, the latest one. Which one is the? What's the rest of the title? Crimes of Grindelwald or whatever the fuck or. Um, is it the latest one? I don't re- I don't even remember the name of it. It was the latest Fantastic Beast movie. Anyway, um, I'm wa- I wanted to see it because so much. Well, one, Mads replaced you know uh, Johnny Depp for this last movie or whatever, right? Or the, the yeah. s- uh, Secrets of Dumbledore. Sorry, that that was it. So you know, Fantastic Beasts, Secrets of Dumbledore. So I wanted to see it because um, it had been so panned. For 
for from what I could tell, any other reason except for the movie was actually bad. It was, oh, it's a J.K. Rowling thing, or oh, it was, you know, Johnny Depp got replaced by Mads Mikkelsen, or oh, you know, they lost the plot and it's no longer about beasts anymore, which was like the closest thing to an actual critique of the, the series as a whole, but not necessarily this individual film. I was like, you know what? The Harry Potter films are like a guilty pleasure of mine. I've seen the first, you know, Fantastic two Fantastic Beast films or whatever, or the other Fantastic Beast film. I can't even remember if it's one or three anymore, because honestly, it's good, but it wasn't like fucking me up. Um So we try we check that out. And I <laughs> It's a perfectly serviceable movie. I like there was nothing like all the actors fucking crushed it. Like, if there's one thing that they do well with these with these films is that they cast good people and they play their characters really fucking well. The I, we mentioned it, or I mentioned it before, and I'll never remember his fucking name, but it's the guy who who plays uh, the uh, the lead role in, in Fantastic Beasts. Um, yeah. Um... <clears throat> and the chat always ends up getting there before we do. <laughs> <laughs> he did, um, he's done a bunch more stuff, uh, recently, um, he plays Newt Scamander in the movie, and I can't, Eddie Redmayne! I, there you go, no, is that it? Yep, Eddie Redmayne, yep. Okay, alright. So, uh, anyway, Eddie Redmayne fucking just crushes that role so fucking hard, uh, that I, I, I wanted to continue watching the series just because he has continued to play this character. Uh, and again, he fucking smashed it, uh, in, in this role, but so did absolutely everyone else. There was not a weak part. And, and when they announced that Johnny was going to get replaced, yeah, it was a little sad, uh, cause Johnny was playing that role really well, but you know what, when they, when they announced Mads Mikkelsen, again, they're really good at casting people. When Mads walked into the role, if it wasn't for the fact that, I, you know, that, you know, if you had watched the mo other movies more recently, it would be more jarring, but if you've been like me and you haven't watched since the other movies like originally came out and you and you don't remember every fucking waking detail it was almost as seamless as you could hope for a character switch like that to be mads fell right into it crushed it i haven't seen mads give a shitty performance so uh, this yeah. is a continuation of that um especially when it's this kind of character he plays the bad guy really well he looks the part he plays the part uh, it, it was good. Uh, the the scene design, the art design, everything, all the set work, everything they had in there is, I don't know of another movie since, or another series of movies since Lord of the Rings that does it as well and as believably, or as believable, yeah, as believably as these movies have. Um, music is still really good. Everything is supposed good. The only thing that I could say is I agree is that at some point in the in the early throws of this, for whatever reason, and I don't, I'm not so hard into the into the into the books and the series to be able to like give some of the takes that some people have, and that's probably for the better because it means I've enjoyed the movies more than than they have. Uh, is that they do lose the plot a little bit? Like there's just plot holes out the fucking wazoo, but I'm not necessarily watching it for the incredible plot i'm watching it for for character actors that are crushing the roles which is exactly what you get i'm watching it for incredible art design and set design which is what you get i'm watching it for uh for uh, great music and world building and you get all of that shit like jk might fuck a lot of shit up and she's clearly got some fucking stupid ass opinions yeah, but her world her, her she's, she's uh, fucking nutty but her world her world building and the yeah, stuff that's great. come out of it yeah. Uh, like, take that away point, from yeah. point me to somebody who does it better in modern times, really. Other, like, uh, the closest I can come up with, that it, for me personally, my personal taste, is it's Lord of the Rings and then Harry Potter. And uh, then George R.R. George R. Martin's pretty, he's got a pretty good imagination, too. Yeah, yes, I have it, uh, 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 and, and I would agree with that for sure. Uh, I, I'm talking about, like, movies, spe movies specifically. Uh, yeah. Game of Thrones as a, a series is fucking wild, and clearly, when every book mm -hmm. is 710,000 pages long, your world building better be fucking good, otherwise you're wasting everyone's time. Uh, and hopefully he finishes anything that isn't, you know, a movie or a TV show, and maybe finish the books before he dies. I don't know if he ever will, but lots of people are pulling for him in that in that regard. But uh, but yeah, and you know what? That's funny. And I was going to mention this about about Mads as well. Uh, it, it, I'm almost I'm almost going to promise you he he he's never seen a Harry Potter Mads never seen a Harry Potter film, never read a book, probably doesn't even know who J.K. Rowling is. 
For fuck's sake, this man barely ever knows the director for the movies he's on. This man is the epitome of zero fucks given. He shows up, somebody hands him a script, he says, yeah, I can do that. He does it, he doesn't fucking care about anything else, and then apparently he goes and spends time with Hideo Kojima for the last few years. He's a fucking seriously odd duck, uh, but he, uh, but he did well. So anyway, I would say... For me, from an enjoyment factor, if I'm not rating it super critically and trying to be, like, specific about his plot holes, uh, I'd give it an 8. Yeah. All right. I'd give it a fucking 8. I, I can't, I can't, I can't really fault it more than that. I think it, I think they, they did a wonderful job, and, uh, and I think it's sad, really, that JK has fallen into what she has here, uh, uh, or, you know, of her own volition, clearly. I'm not saying she fell into it accidentally. Uh, because, as I've mentioned before, if there's any takeaway with the Harry Potter books, whether you like them or not, and the movies and shit, that series quite literally generated a minimum of two straight generations of children that got hardcore into reading. And there are very few authors, children authors, youth authors, or otherwise, that ever get to claim that as being a thing. And, uh, and then she tra- and then it translated to movies! Better than almost any novel to movie adaptation. Mm. Uh, again, Lord of the Rings would be the thing that I would pin that to, and then to some degree, Game of Thrones. Uh, so yeah, I, I, very uh, yeah, I, I would recommend it if you're if you're somebody that's closer to me that you're not so hardcore about about like you've read all the books and you know every fucking second sentence and maybe you're gonna poke it full of holes and not enjoy it. But if you just kind of enjoy the world building and kind of can just accept it for what Harry Potter has become, it's an eight. And there you go. Which means it's now time to move on to... Tech support. Patreon.com slash lag TV is the place to go if you want to financially support the podcast. And you should do that. Mostly because I need it. Uh, Each and every week, $10 or more, you're going to be able to... Well, not $10 a week. That would be a bit excessive. Uh, But uh, for $10 or more each month, you get a couple of things chiefly. You get to ask us questions that we answer here on the podcast at the end of the show. Now, via a post that I put up on Patreon before we get started called Tech Support. And uh, that's, coincidentally, the name of the segment. Let's see what we got this week. Okay. <laughs> All right, this is actually two people hopped in to make one... To make one uh, one note here, a bit of a meme, but, uh, Seth and then later D needs. So the year is 2045, Mr. Black. We've gone, you know, 23 years in the future. The year is 2045. The Xbox Series Pi is outselling the PlayStation whatever symbol the, that Prince used. <laughs> uh, and Bethesda is still Bethesda. What device... What device have they ported Skyrim onto now? And then Neves follows up with, better question, what device uh, has Bethesda not ported Skyrim to by 2045? I agree, that's the easier way to answer that. And the answer is none. Everything in 2045 is a smart device, your toothbrush, your fucking condom, uh, every single thing that you use on a daily basis is a smart device. The celery that you use to dip in shit probably has an RFID chip implanted in it to gather information about you and send it back to our our lizard overlords in the year 2045. And yes, Skyrim even plays on that piece of celery. Every single platform that Todd Howard can put Skyrim on, it is going to be on that platform. Chiefly because as he said himself, God Howard himself said, because people keep buying it. So why in the shit would you stop? (laughs) <laughs> you don't you don't stop. I mean, listen, if they're still selling the way they're selling, keep selling. Skyrim forever. Skyrim for everyone. Um uh also Dean Eves, what's your preferred method of home heating and water heating? I am now a homeowner and our place has oil for both, but oh. I'm debating switching that out at least yeah, that's that's rough right now. At yeah. least with the water heater. It's old and going to need replacement soon anyway. Uh, I've, uh, the places I've lived have had a mixture of electric, I've had water, I've had, um, so, some of the family ho- houses have had, uh, oil for certain things and electric for others, mixtures uh, uh, of stuff. Um, man, just electric is just like, uh, there's always something about having oil and gas for everything that just gives me a fu- like, anxiety. Like, I just... <laughs> 
<laughs> like, like, uh, like electric can burn your house down, but I just always have like this thing. I've got a tank of fucking oil outside my house, or I've got a natural gas stove in the fucking kitchen, kitchen just piping fucking gas uh, to it at all times. And the only thing that's stopping it is like a a five dollar gasket that's just fucking stopping it from coming into the house. I just like I I've never been able to feel like truly safe with it. Um, and so electric is 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 really my choice and the, and the nice thing about electric now is that you could you get some pretty efficient stuff like heat pumps yep i mean that shit's fucking crazy magnets how do they work i don't know but it gave me a heat pump and uh that shit's incredible uh, it's you know it's a heat in the winter it's it's cool in the summer uh and it costs way less than trying to like refit your entire fucking house with a bunch of bullshit and so, yeah, I, I also, I will say that, that despite that, from a heat perspective, I'm, uh, uh, oil furnace is not bad with forced air because it heats a room up in like fucking literally seconds. You can go from minus 42 degrees in like my, my, my grandmother's place, the one, our family home. That's like 200 year old house. You go from minus 45, which ain't hard in the winter time out there. There's no insulation in the fucking house. Like minus 45 in there. You're freezing your tits off. Everything is fucking frozen solid. You press the, you press the on button for the furnace and the forced air system comes on and it sounds like a hurricane when it first turns on, but no shit minus 45 to plus 45 in like five minutes. It is the fastest heat bar none the closest to that is a heat pump in that regard but a heat pump takes a little longer to get a whole house because or a whole floor because it's square footage based yeah. and it has to blow it all the way down at the end of something whereas forced air you tend to have grates around the house where every single room is getting some sort of air so that's probably it's probably my my choices anyway but heat pump for life yeah uh yeah i mean i'm in the same boat like listen if your house already has oil like you have a furnace whatnot like I always say for people to, you know, keep doing that until your furnace like goes, you know, when, when your shit's about to go, then it's um, time. And it's time. It's time to switch. I mean, it's not, it's not the sixties anymore, you know, <laughs> uh, there, are, you know, because if you're going to go and spend 20, $30,000 on a new furnace, or if your furnace, you're constantly having to have a technician come in and, uh, fix little shit here and there or your chimney's all fucked up or um whatever the case may be that shit adds up and it adds up quick like real quick notwithstanding um, the price of oil right now that i mean i was about to get to that that <laughs> you know the price of oil right now is a big no for me dog um doesn't mean you should go out and refit your whole house because like a lot of the times you you're you're gonna go from oil to electrical, right? So you're gonna have to refit your whole house. Um, that shit ain't no joke. Wiring um, a house retrofit yeah, is a lot of holes and a lot of pain. Yeah, it's uh, it's not it's not easy. And depending on how old your house is, you you know you if you whether you have drywall or plaster, like you got to be careful of asbestos. So you don't want to just open up walls. And, you know, to go and fit things, because next thing you know it, that your bill can get a lot bigger. Um, so, you know, look into those things. Because once you start opening up walls, even if you don't have plaster, like you can still get as asbestos, depending on how old your house is. Um, but yeah, you should definitely look into switching when the time is right. Now, if you're just moving into a new house and it's empty and you've got a budget and you just want to get rid of the oil, all this oil shit then yeah, it's probably the best time to do it when your house is empty, uh, but it is going to cost you. Uh, getting a couple of heat pumps or, you know, whether it's top floor, I don't know if you get a bungalow, if multiple levels, like you might need a couple of heat pumps uh, for your house or you get one large heat pump that can force the air throughout your whole house. I don't know how it's set up. Um, it's definitely worth, and over time, you're going to save money than not dealing with oil. Not only that, you know, every month you got to get a company to come over, pump your fucking tanks with oil. Um, you're going to pay out the ass for that. It's pain in the ass. You got to deal with filters and fucking uh, all kinds of shit. I mean, just, I mean, you got to deal with filters anyway, but like it, there's just more stuff with the furnace. Let's just put it that way. I've, and I've owned properties that have um, furnaces, oil, um, hot water heaters, um, like oil, heated water, um, all, I've done it all. 
And it's all nightmare fuel in time because a lot of it is old. It goes. And that's the last a big thing bill. Want, the last thing you want to do in the middle of winter, depending on where you live, is to have your fucking furnace go out. Uh, it's just you got no other way to heat your house except you're going to be plugging in a whole bunch of space heaters until you can get your shit. Nah, that ain't it. <laughs> but it is what it is. I don't know your your actual situation, but when it's time when it's time to switch, switch. Don't go and rebuy a new furnace. You know, switch it up. Yeah. But uh, with with that, you got to make sure you got proper ampage. You you can't just hook up a whole well, bunch of no. fucking heaters all over the place and, and and hook it up to your panel that you know might not like. And that's the thing. Depending on what your panel is, you might have to upgrade your whole, and likely, you likely will have to your upgrade whole your whole fucking panel. And in some cases, then you gotta, you gotta get your power company in to run thicker lines. Like, it's a big deal. You gotta pull permits. You do all that shit. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot of fucking annoying, crazy work to do that kind of shit. Uh, and very expensive, to say the least. Which is why most people don't bother. They just they suck it bother. up and just fucking yep. deal with it. Yep. Uh, Mark Furry asks, what tool do you own that you use the most, and which one do you own that you use the least? Oh, the most is definitely my electric drill. You know, just like for mm. your, your flathead or your whatever, right? Your star or whatever. It's yep. Like, that's, yeah. I use that every week, easily. Um. Uh, hmm. The one I don't use, the, the one I use the least is probably like a circular saw. Yeah, I I rarely use it. You uh, you, so you don't use skill saws. You really you use mostly chop saws for most of your work. Chop I guess. saws mostly. Yeah. Um, I would say, I would say the tool that I, like not like a, a, if I take a tape measure out because tape measures is bo easily That's the most used. Cheating. Yeah. Which is like cheating because you kind of use it by default. I would. Yeah. I mean, I would. I would say. I would say that. A specifically, if I was going to say like screwdriver and not just like a power drill, um, it's a number. It's a it's a number two. Um, Robinson specifically uh, is like ninety nine percent of the work uh, that I, that I I do uh, because anyone that uses and unless you're doing like really small machine work where you can't risk s stripping the screw or stripping the threads in the thing that you're putting it into. Using anything that isn't a Robinson screw is you're you're a psychopath. Just use a fucking Robinson screw. I, I, why you wouldn't do that shit? Stop building shit with nails. The screws cost the same as nails. Just get like deck rated screws and screw everything. Because then when you invariably as a DIYer fuck some shit up, guess what? Take those bad boys out. Make the change you need to make them. Put the same two fucking screws back in. If you're going in there swinging big dick three inch nails into making stud walls and all this other shit and you fuck up. Rip. So I would say number two, Robbie, is uh, is the go-to for, for me. And then uh, the least used tool... Uh, Robertson, yeah, the Robinson screwdriver head thing is in fact a Canadian invention and, and is the superior screw because you get all the torque forever. I mean, if you ever wanted to experimentally drill or, or just put a screw directly through a six by six, you can do that with a Robinson screw because it will, it will simply not strip the head. You just fucking drive that bitch from one side to the other. Uh, my least used tool though is, oh... I mean, I, there's a ton of, like, really specialty tools that you just pull out when you're only doing specialty work, so I'll avoid, I'll try to avoid that stuff. Like, for example, like, shark bite, um, stuff for doing plumbing and whatnot, you're only ever going to use it for when you're doing that specific job, uh, with that specific fitting. Uh, so I would say, I would say the, the least used would be, like, a... Probably a metal saw, really one of the, like a fine, fine, fine tooth metal saw, because the vast majority of the stuff that I'm cutting that that's anything that's metal tends to be copper, and then I'm just using a pipe cutter. Um, and, and so once in a blue moon, for like really specific shit, a metal saw is actually used, but otherwise, yeah, it's a pipe cutter. So probably a metal saw is the least used uh, tool that uh, that we actively use to some degree. Um, 8910 asks, do you think 
Facebook's metaverse project will succeed, or do you think it will fizzle out like Google Stadia? What do you think, Mr. Black? Um, be honest, I don't know too much about this meta shit. So, I, I can't say yay or nay. Um, All right. I don't. I don't know much. If I just had to guess, I would say it will be successful as a concept, but I think somebody else or another variation will probably be the thing that'll be the thing. But once again, I'm talking up my ass because I don't really know much. And to be frank, I don't really care to know much. <laughs> I'm not even sure Facebook knows much about yeah. it. They're just doing it. So yeah, uh, you sure. know, you're not, you know, you're still qualified. I, I, Facebook or Meta, what the company is technically called now, I like, they have so much money that if they try hard enough, I'm sure they can make it stick. Uh, the question will be, will there be a point in which they spend so much money that they, that they decide to stop? And that's basically, that's all there is to it. Will, will they, will they be willing to spend the money that it takes to keep this around, make it stick, and then build a user base, which we've already discussed a couple weeks ago how expensive that's been for them. I mean, in the first quarter of this year, they've spent like, what was it, one or two billion dollars in the first like quarter of 2022. So, I mean, even for them, that kind of, that kind of, that kind of spend, that's a lot of money. Uh, and so, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, the metaverse has already really exist in various ways in a number of different places. And Facebook doesn't seem, the, the biggest thing because like Jeff, I don't know like a lot about their their shit, but the biggest thing that I see is critiques from people who do know and are involved in that space um, is that they just don't bring anything new to the table. And then what they do bring to the table is really mediocre shit. So it's, it's like the meta, as, as you can expect, like the way people describe it, it's like metaverse for people of an age group that don't actually fucking care about the metaverse. Which it sounds exactly like something Facebook would do, because it's a bunch of like middle-aged women posting baby pictures 99.9% .9 of the time. Uh, so maybe Facebook's metaverse will just be baby pictures in the metaverse in VR uh, instead. But uh, I don't know. Do I think it will fizzle out like Google Stadia? The thing about Google is that you can almost guarantee that things will fizzle out because they cancel like 99% of the shit that they have, even if it's like semi-successful. Um, Facebook is a bit of a different uh, animal. Uh, and, um, but I do expect it to not be as successful as they need it to be. Um, oh God. Okay. So Dana's De devil is asking, do you have a Jack Sparrow voice, Mr. Black? I don't, don't. suppose you got, I don't either. I don't. Uh, but I will, I will. Okay. I'm not even going to try. So don't even ask me. No, I'm not going to ask you to do it. Okay. No, 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 no. Um, this is, so this is a shortened but quote from the trial from yesterday that was a text that uh that johnny sent to i can't remember who he sent it to um i can't remember who, i can't remember anyway and it ended up being pulled from his cell phone carrier to be used as evidence okay and this was immediately following i believe i believe it was immediately following amber posting the article that caused this whole thing to fucking explode as it has been. So Johnny was incredibly fucking salty and he, he was very poetic in his salt in this text. Now I think you and I both agree as long-term friends, we, and when we've been angry back in the days, we were much younger men, women involved or otherwise, we've probably sent or said to each other some pretty crazy shit. We've described people and said some crazy shit about some people in private because we knew nobody would ever see or hear of that shit. It happens. You get angry, you say some crazy shit. I suspect when Johnny first wrote this, he didn't think it would be read out loud in front of, like, a few hundred million people watching that shit, uh, and finding out about it, but here we are, it happened! So, this is in court record, by the way. This will be forever enshrined in court record for all of eternity. She sucked mollusks, and that's not a, 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 uh, a, a misspelling. He actually calls, calls Elon Musk mollusk. She sucked Mollusk's crooked dick and gave her some shitty lawyers. I have no mercy, no fear, and not an ounce of emotion or what I once thought was love for this gold-digging, low-level, dime-a-dozen, mushy, pointless, dangling, overused, flappy fish market. Was his description of Amber Heard. <laughs> okay. I mean, and then, 
right below that he followed I that mean, up with i mean is that bad is 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 that i mean listen <laughs> well, it, it doesn't him, prove anything she over. yeah she fucked him over i mean yes he's angry he's pissed and so I mean, he imagine follows what the, she said about this dude and so he Call follows the, he follows this up afterwards it's sort of fuck follows this up afterwards he doesn't have it written here but he says something along the lines of he wants all the smoke from elon he said elon can bring he's basically this paraphrasing he's like elon can bring that shit if he wants to meet outside the courtroom he said uh we'll see if we'll see if Mol i think he said he, we'll see if mollusk has any balls so take you know meet me outside the courtroom I'll show him things he's never seen before, like the underside of his dick after I cut it off. And I was like, oh my god. That's and a little the, weird. And the and the fucking and the fucking lawyer was had to read this out loud in court. So he's sitting here going, and I will show him things he's never sh <laughs> shown. <laughs> Dude, I lost my mind. I was like, this is the greatest text I've ever seen in my life absolutely destroyed her and elon musk uh, i think the i think the idea was like musk has got like yeah you know he's got like the dad gut now and so it's like he's never seen the underside of his own dick mm. uh and uh it might also be a small dick joke on top of that and then he just said you know i'll show it to him i'll cut it off first and he'll show him so yeah. and then elon musk will say hey look at my bank account fuck boy yeah <laughs> i could buy i could buy a hundred don johnny depps and it wouldn't you know <laughs> It's whatever. No, I think you hit a certain level of money where it just doesn't really fucking matter anymore. And Johnny Depp is worth like two hundred million dollars after the the after the money he yeah. lost in the last couple of court cases. And that's what that's money we know about, bro. I'm sure he's got like he's got a few other extra money. dollars. He's got yeah. investments. You know, he's <laughs> Johnny Johnny Depp is rich as fuck. He's got, he's some got money. his own goddamn island. You know, after what I'm after a while, it's like, oh, what do you got? A billion? You got two hundred billion? Matter. Doesn't it, even matter anymore. Doesn't matter. Um, interesting fact, uh, I read the other, uh, read the other day, if you had a billion dollars in, in, in cash, uh, so if you had a billion dollars in cash and then you endeavored to do your best to live a lavish lifestyle, uh, of spending something in the neighborhood of $5 million a month, I believe they, they said was the number. So if you lived on $60 million a year, which for some people would be very difficult, Mr. Black, I don't know if you could, uh, you or myself could personally manage There's no living way. On, on only $5 do, million dollars a month. How do you even spend that much on yourself? You have to start inventing shit, uh, I think. Just making up new and exciting- I think that's how Squid Game starts oh, at that point. Makes sense. <laughs> or Mr. Beast videos, one or the other. So, uh, yes, yeah, so five million dollars. So if you did that, after ten years, you, your net worth would still have, just by interest alone, just a regular interest, no fancy fuckery, you just dumped it into bank- your 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 net worth is then 1.5 billion dollars. <laughs> so you've done nothing but sit on money, spend 5 million dollars a month and you still increase your net worth by 50% to 1.5 billion dollars. So if you ever want to know why why people with money just keep making more money, they can literally run out of ideas as to how to make money and it doesn't matter anymore. They could live in perpetuity. They can't outspend their own fucking interest at that point. Well, yeah, it's just because I funny. mean, the cost of living, it's only so much, right? So like, you know, at the end of the day, once you, I mean, even well, I mean, if you had a Five million dollars a month isn't cost of living anymore. That's, that's like, yeah, but that's I the mean, cost like, of just to, trying to figure out how to spend money at that point. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, if you have a hundred million dollars, you could easily spend, you know, you could you could spend ten million dollars a year. Yes, and, and you're still and you gonna tread, make that you money tread, back. You tread interest. water. Yeah, you yeah. tread water. You, you at a million might, dollars a month. You <laughs> might start to like dig into just ever so slightly the you original dent, capital. Yeah, like you you might you might at, by the end of it, and there's a chance that you might break even or you still have more money at the end of the year, depending on what how the market goes. I mean, over time, you're, you're gonna be fine. So, yeah. so Johnny will be fine. He's got he's got several dollars. He'll be okay. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, telling uh, telling Amber, unfortunately, publicly. And it was funny is that it, it was on the screen. So there's all these people in court, hundreds of millions of people fucking watching this shit in video form later. It's in perfect court all, record. Everybody's going, yup. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. bro, when you hit a point where you start calling a, a, a woman a mushy, pointless, dangling, overused, flappy fish market, that's some fuck. You've you've hit different levels of burns that I didn't even think existed. Yeah, calling I somebody mean, a fish market. You know, yeah, I mean, it's obviously it's pretty 
derogatory and <laughs> mean. But, you know, the dude's pissed. I mean, fucking... we've all said some shit about people. I, I haven't used such language and, and crafted my, my wording. I don't think I so could. Poetic. No, I don't I'm think just I could. Creative. I'd just be like, fuck that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but obviously he's just fucking super pissed. He's salty that, you know, one of the richest people in the world, if not the richest person in the world, uh, or one of them, is uh is banging his his girl i mean i mean fuck <laughs> like, like i can understand be- i can under, like like from a from a guy perspective like i could understand james franco like all right he's a good looking dude yeah he's he's got a fucked up you know record but at least he's a good looking dude and then you like go from 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 james franco to elon musk you're like well i know it's about the money because goddamn come about on the money and he, and it was like a threesome too right so like you know oh, yeah. it was it was just it was a good time party <laughs> You know that that's all that was. We know we know what Amber Heard is. It's all good. Hey, get around, and do your thing. Uh, do do your business. Um. Well, uh, Doctor Samurai asks, do you think Epic will have good free games forever? Probably. Yeah, probably. I don't, like if they make enough, if they keep making money the way that they're making it, they can they can continue to provide certain amounts of games for free. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so there you go. Um, <laughs> okay, here you go. Here you go. I think I think I know this answer for for Mr. Black. Uh, so let's this comes in from Yano. So let's say Lag TV uh, was as big as PewDiePie back in the day, I guess, because you know, I mean PewDiePie is still big, but he's not like the show anymore. Uh, in an alternate universe, do you guys move to Los Angeles and live the big YouTube mansion lifestyle? No. This is a waste of money. Why the fuck, dude? Yeah, no. No. I, I, I just couldn't do that shit. Like, what was exactly the question? Would we move there and live there? Yeah, like, in, in an alternate universe, if we were as big as PewDiePie back in the day, and we were making that kind of money, do you think we would have moved to L.A. to live the, the, the YouTube mansion lifestyle? No, why? Like, like, it's just not my scene. It's the just, money, if we were making PewDiePie money, let me put it this way. If we were making PewDiePie money, it would go literally, especially back then when we were doing that, the, the, the shit. The money would go, and I'm not even fucking with you, 10 to 15 times further here than it would oh, for sure. in LA. Oh, and for so, sure. like, what, what, what are you really doing to yourself? Like, do you, do you just, like, hell no, to the no, no, no. Um... We already asked to answer that question in the past, not that long ago. Oh, here's a good one. Uh, A. Dent asks, Imagine every time you got into an argument or engaged in fisticuffs, fist fight with somebody, which, uh, with someone, video game uh, battle music would start playing. What would you want your battle music to be? It's got to be a video game battle theme. Um, how are you not supposed to just immediately say Final Fantasy VII's, you know, don't be afraid? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good like, one. Like, how could you not like that? Yeah, uh, I mean, that's a good one. <laughs> um, I don't even know what else, I don't even. I mean, Lost Odyssey's battle theme is also pretty fun. Oh, sorry, I just, I just accidentally. D- uh, and put Final Fantasy eight in there uh, instead of seven, um, but yes, all the same, eight or seven would be good. Um, Lost Odyssey had good battle theme music. Um, Guile's theme from Street Fighter. That's pretty good too. Oof. Ooh, that's a good one too. Round one, fight. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Final Fantasy. I, I'm gonna go with the Final Fantasy battle music just because it's so classic, man. And it's got it's just it's got, got that video. But Street Fighter's a good one. Mm. It's a good one. Uh or we just got a couple left here. Uh Phil says, I saw Sonic 2 today. Loads of fun. Which Sonic game from any system did you enjoy the most, Mr. Black? Uh I only ever really played the first and second Sonic for Sega. I mean, it's a good uh, place to stop, really. I mean, you, you, you missed out yeah. on a couple, but you didn't, like, miss out, on a, miss out on a hell of a lot. I'm gonna go with Sonic 2. Hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think Sonic 2 will forever be it. You know what? I didn't hate Sonic Generations, which was not the... Uh, I don't think that was the one where, like, the fans stepped in and, like, fixed the fucking thing. That was another one I, I want to say, but... Um, Sonic Generations, but I, I, I didn't completely hate that. But yeah, Sonic... Sonic 2, 1, 2, and 3. And, and for me, I know some people, I think, might say, like, maybe Sonic... I think Colors or Sonic CD. There's a couple others that were, you know, that had some... Uh, some stuff. I- I played a lot of Sonic 3D Blast, which is, like, one of the, like, worst rated fucking Sonic games, but I didn't completely hate it. But yeah, probably two or three. Uh, I don't know how you, like, get... How are you supposed to get away from the first three? That's- that's- that's difficult. Uh, last question, and this is topical, because I'll be making use of one of these here not too, uh, not too long from now. Uh, Time Tricks asked, Uh, do you prefer paper or electronic checklists when you go to a retail store? I'm a, I'm a paper guy, man. So am I. <laughs> there is, don't I, email me the fucking receipt. Give it to me physical. No, 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 so no. I, when you go to a store, so you, mis, mis, you misunderstood. I, I agree, too. I want the physical receipt at the store. But when you go to a store and you have a list of things that you need to get, do you write the list on paper oh, or on your phone? Oh, I'm writing it down. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to write. And the thing is, when I write it down, I just, like, I don't forget it either. And yeah. You know, if I'm just, like, plugging shit into my phone... I mean, I'll be honest, there are times where, you know, I just don't have shit on me. And so yeah, I'll put it in my notes at, on my phone. But if I'm at home and I got, like, a list of things I got to do, I prefer to just write them down, put it on a piece of paper, yeah. stick it into my pocket. And then as I'm walking around in the store, I've got my list, you know? Uh, it's I just, don't know why, like, because you, like, you would think for efficiency's sake and not having to use paper your phone like there's a thousand list apps and shit that your phone would have that you could do it there's even stuff that, that I, I used to try to use in the past uh with like natalie and i when, when we lived together and we had a shared app where um uh i can't remember the name of the, the the app now but like you could write down like your groceries and everything and they'd be shared and then so the, anyone could add to that list and yeah. then you could go to the store and like cross shit off like normally. And we used it for like a month and then I just went right back to paper. There's something about holding my phone and fucking looking at, uh, at a list and then, and then like putting my phone away and turning my phone Bring back, back fuck on. Yeah. It's annoying. Just, uh, it's yeah. just, there's something about just having the paper that I'd rather just have the I definitely the, uh, the do paper. it. Um, like I use, I use my notes a lot for, uh, for literal notes. So like if I'm out, and something hits me or I need to mm. write down someone's phone number or, you know, say I'm taking some measurements, I'll just quickly throw it on my phone and then I'll convert it over to paper right. or whatever if I'm yeah, going yeah, home yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But a lot of the time, I'm, you know, my notes are there, but if I'm home and I'm going out and say I got, which I never do, a grocery list, but um, say I'm going to a liquor store and there's a bunch of people here and they're like, hey, can you grab me this, 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 and this? I'll just take a piece of printer paper and write write it down <laughs> take it with me i'm old school. I, I same same way i mean and i have a i have a fucking note i mean i have i literally have yeah you, you actually know, have a, a i note. have i have a fucking pen to write it's just not notes the same. on it's not the uh same. and i will do that again similar to you if i'm at the house and i'm making measurements and i and i'm like keeping record of of things for that i'll use my phone for that i'll take a picture i'll write notes on top of the picture shit of that nature but if it's a, a list to pick up shit yeah every time yeah I, I think that's a good way to describe it i use it for things that i know i'm in a store on my phone yeah. whether that is for a week three days yeah in forever indefinitely indefinitely <laughs> i'll put it on there if it's something i'm just going to from point a to point b a lot of times i'll just write it down oh, yeah, yeah, i'm a boomer sure. okay boomer it's true it's true we're boomers well, not technically, but to 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 anyone in Generation Z, anyone over the age of like, I think it's like twenty two is officially oh. like a fucking boomer. Yeah. So we're we're done. We're not boomers. We're dead. Yeah, we're doomers, at that point. We're doomers. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for this week's podcast. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're catching it live, and if, of course, if you're listening to this on the way to work or otherwise uh, on the RSS feeds, we greatly appreciate it. Head on over to patreon.com slash lag TV, L A G TV, if you want to financially support the podcast and help keep this bad boy uh, rolling. And until next week, stay safe out there, guys, and we'll see you then. Peace. Peace. <laughs> 